So we'll make a start today on vectors. Now, um, yeah, like I say, has anybody in here looked at vectors before? Does the word vectors ring any bells? Okay, so Archimedes, what do you think a vector is? What's your understanding of a vector? Uh, I, I heard about it before, but I don't really know where it is. In what context did you hear it before? You just heard the word before, just generally. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Anybody else heard vectors before? No? Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to give you three different definitions because a vector is a really, really useful concept and it can be used in lots of different places. And depending on where you use it will depend on the definition that you're interested in. So the first definition that I'm going to give you is that it is just simply a list of numbers. Okay, so just simply a list of numbers. So, for example, just throw five numbers out at me. Anybody throw me five numbers? Five. Yep. Four. Seven. Yeah. One more. Three. Three. That's it. So this here would be a vector. Okay? It's just a list of numbers. Right? No particular order going on. It's just simply a list of numbers going on. Okay? Now, this is a particularly useful definition in the context of computing. So if any of you have done any coding before, you'll probably be familiar with the idea of a vector as just simply a way of storing numbers in a list. Okay? Right, so the next definition of a vector is actually the physicist's definition of a vector. Okay? So it's a quantity which has magnitude and direction. Okay? So... What does the word magnitude mean? Does anybody know? Does anybody know what magnitude means? Uh, the, the length. Good, yeah. It's just simply a fancy word for size. So it could be length, could be weight, could be height, could be distance, yeah? It's just simply a fancy word for size. You're happy with, with direction as well, okay? So this would be the physicist's direction, uh, definition of what a vector is, okay? So you've got a computing definition and you've got a physics direct, uh, definition, okay? Um, so, by the way, um, if you want to kind of understand this definition a little bit more, uh, I can give you an example. Speed and velocity. Okay? These are two quantities that really describe pretty much the same thing. They're talking about how fast you're going. But speed is just simply a magnitude. It's just simply a size. Okay? It's just how fast you're going. 30 miles an hour, 20 meters per second, whatever. If you put in a direction as well, it becomes a vector, okay? So if it's just a magnitude or just a direction, not both, we give it a special name, we call it a scalar, okay? Because it's just a size, okay? Or it's just a direction, it's not both, okay? Whereas velocity in this case, because it has both a magnitude and a direction, it becomes a vector. Is that okay? So scalar is just a quantity, it's just a magnitude, so, for example, height, yeah, uh, distance, right? But as soon as you start incorporating um, direction in there as well, it becomes a vector. Any questions so far? No? So these are two nice definitions, and I give you these definitions because some people have heard of vectors in lots of different places, okay? But the definition that I really want to focus on is the geometric definition of a vector. So in this course, we focus on the idea of a vector from the idea of geometry. In other words, from shapes, okay, from drawing things. And it is just simply a movement which describes a movement from one point to another. Okay, so it's a movement from one point to another. Okay, so here we go. This is the definition that I want to focus on. If you don't understand these two, that's fine. This is the definition I want you to understand. It's just simply a movement from one point to another. Does that make sense? Okay. So this would be the geometry point of view. Right? So let me illustrate this idea a little bit further. <coughs> let me just draw two points on the board. Let's say this point and this point over here. And in fact, I'm going to give them a special name. So I'm going to give this point A and this point B. I can call it whatever I like. Okay? Now, if I wanted to describe the movement from A to B, okay, it doesn't matter how I get there as long as I move from A to B. So that would be one possible movement. Are you happy? The one in red. 
Yeah, that'd be one possible movement. Another possible movement could be something like this. Okay, so go around here, then up here, and then back down here. That would also be a valid idea of the movement from A to B. Does that make sense? So in actual fact, because I'm just talking about the movement, this definition is just talking about the movement, it doesn't matter how I get from A to B, all that matters is that I get from A to B. So in actual fact, the red line and the black line would be equivalent from the idea of a vector. Is that okay? Yeah? So just to make things a little bit cleaner, we tend to draw vectors as straight lines. But of course we don't have to if we're looking at it from the geometric perspective. Okay? So there's a few things that we need to be able to do with vectors. There's a few things we need to be able to do. Okay? Firstly, we need to be able to describe vectors using the correct notation. So can anybody give me any ideas for a way that I could write the movement from A to B, the vector AB? Any ideas? A plus A then comma B. Okay, so you're using the idea that you're moving from A to B. Okay, good. I could just draw an arrow over the top. That would be fine, wouldn't it? That literally means moving from A to B. Okay. I could also give this a special name. Okay. Uh, let's suppose that this distance, this vector here, I call U. Now just be aware of this. There's two ways that I could write this. So I could either write it with an arrow over the top to show that it's a vector, or I can write it with a line underneath, okay? So if I put a line underneath, it means it's a vector, okay? I would not write it just as u, okay? Because this means a variable, right? And I'm not talking about a variable, I'm actually talking about a movement, I'm talking about a vector. So therefore, you have to either put it as u with, a, with an arrow over the top, or u with a line underneath. Now, if you look in the textbook, sometimes they will write it something differently. They'll actually write it as a U, which is in bold face. Okay, so it's in bold font. Now, obviously, I can't draw bold font very easily on the board. So if you see it written in the, in the, in the, um, in the book or in the um, questions, it will always be written, or it will sometimes be written, as a bold font. That also means a vector. But obviously, we can't write it like that, so we don't write it. Is that okay? Yeah? Any questions? Okay, good. So let me get rid of that as well. Okay, let's think about how else we can talk about this. Now a really useful way sometimes is to think about it in terms of its components. Now remember I said to you that a vector is just simply a movement that gets you from one point to another. It doesn't matter how you get there. Do you remember when I drew that black line on? I said that's a equi completely equivalent vector to the red vector. Okay. So another way that I can break this distance up is into a movement across and a movement up and down. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I can equally break this vector, this red vector, into its components. Its left and right direction and its up and down direction. And of course, are you happy? These have to be perpendicular to each other, right angles to each other. Okay? So let's suppose, for example, that I knew I moved four units across. Okay, it could be four centimetres, could be four kilometres, could be four whatever, four units. And let's suppose that I knew I moved three units up. Five. Go on. Five. Okay, what's five? What to do with the vector? The distance, perfect. So the distance, the straight line distance from A to B will be five. Why has it got to be five? Pythagorean Exactly, just Pythagoras, right? So the way which I would write that is just simply using a straight line each side of my vector. Okay, so if I use this symbol here, does anybody know what this symbol is when I drew a straight line each side of something? Positive. It means positive, yeah, good, or it means distance, okay? So modulus is sometimes called it, but yeah, it means positive number, yeah? So it's just the distance, in fact, let me write that in. Okay, distance, or I could write magnitude if I wanted to, would just simply be four squared, plus three squared, square rooted, which in this case is five. So the distance, the straight line distance from A to B will be five. Does that make sense? Okay. I could also write this vector as a column. Okay. So the way which I, um, I can think of this, what else can you think of which um, gets me four units across and three units up? So what things do you already know about where I'd have four units across and units up and down? What else would I be talking about? What, sorry? 
a gradient, good. Uh, tend not to talk about gradient in this case because it doesn't make sense so much. The rate of change, good. Or just simply, if I wrote this down, what would I be talking about? Point. A point, good. So you already know a quantity which talks about a distance left and right and a distance up and down. It's a point, okay? Now clearly this thing is not a point, is it? It's a movement, right? So it's not a point, it's a movement. But it's following the same idea. So to show it's following the same idea, the way which I'd write this, is as a column. So instead of going as a row, I go as a column, like this. But it's exactly the same idea as a point. Top number is distance left and right. Bottom number is distance up and down. Does that make sense? Any questions? No? 